Hello, this is Nick, and thanks for tuning in to another video. And today I want to teach um, what the soul is. Because these are the questions I had in the beginning. And they're very basic questions, but once you get them answered, it changes everything. Once you understand them, you get deeper insights into other things or other big questions, or they lead you to ask bigger questions. What we're trying to do is understand the nature of our uh, reality, what, what we're here for, um, what's the purpose of life. You know, a lot of humanity, they don't ask questions. Um, a lot of humanity is scared of the answers. Um, and also we have, you know, basically a race of people who don't know where we came from, don't know what we're doing here and think that this is all there is. I'm actually surprised at how many people still don't believe there's a soul. Um, me personally, I was an atheist for two years. That was because I was not getting answers that satisfied me through religion. But the truth is, I still believed we had a soul. I still believed there was something after life and there was something before life. So, you know, if you don't believe there's a soul, you believe there's just energy and matter, then this is how I see it. Just say you had my dog, for example, and he was lying down asleep in front of you. If you touched him, smelt him, looked at him, and he, he just was just a dog asleep. Now, if at that moment my dog died, he transitioned, at that moment he would look the same, smell the same, he would feel the same, yet something has left him. Something has gone. That is the soul. Now, I've had this conversation with people who don't believe in the soul and I've given them that analogy and they've turned around and said, yeah, but that, that, that doesn't mean it's the soul. That, that's just life leaving them. They're dead. There's life leaving them. So ask the question, what's life? What is this force you're talking about called life? You call it life and I call it the soul. The information that is behind the energy and matter of this reality is spirit. You know, Master Shah says, everything is made of Jing Qi Shen. Jing is matter, Qi is energy, Shen is soul. So soul, mind and body, we've, we've all heard that. Master Shah says that energy and matter are carriers of spirit or message in scientific terms. You know, quantum science is acknowledging the power of message now. Uh, you hear people like Greg Braden who talk about uh, the God Code. And he says, behind every cell, there is a information which determines what that cell is going to be. Um, I interpret that with Master Shah as the soul. Um, so if you look at it, when a cell, every human being starts out as one cell. Behind that cell... There is an information, a message and a blueprint that will determine what that cell will be. Basically, a, a blueprint for your life. Now, I want to read something from one of Master Shah's books. This is called Divine Transformation. And this is fascinating. And this explains what, how we can change the outcome of our life. So, Master Shah says... A human being's life has two conditions. One is the arranged condition. How long a person will live the condition of one's love relationships and family relationships. One's financial condition, one's spiritual, mental, emotional and physical health. All of these are arranged according to one's karma, good or bad. The other condition of a human being's life is the changeable condition. This means that a person can transform his or her life. 
The karmic law explains this very clearly. If one offers universal service, all aspects of life, including health, relationships, finances and more, can become better. One's life can become longer, healthier and happier. If one offers unpleasant service, all aspects of life, including health, relationships, finances and more, could become worse. One's life could become shorter with more challenges and struggles in every aspect. The universal law of universal service or karmic law can explain every aspect of everything and everyone's life. Therefore, how can one transform one's life? The answer can be summarized in one sentence. To transform life is to offer universal service. The more universal service one offers, the more transformation one can achieve. This book is profound. I've read this book a number of times and every time I read it, it's a different book. Uh, and this is a way, a divine transformation, the divine way to self-clear karma and transform your health, relationships, finances and more. In this book, Master Shah is basically saying that we come in with a karmic um, blueprint, if you like, a karmic record determined by our past life services. We can offer bad service and create more challenges in our life and shorten our life, or we can offer good service. Good service is to make others happier and healthier. And by doing this, we can transform our negative karma. We can be forgiven and we can prolong our lives, our health, health our relationship and so on. Now, a question that always comes up is there's still people in the world doing bad things and getting away with it. It all depends on how much virtue they came in with. They may have done a lot of good things in a past life and they're lost in this life. And they're burning through that. You know, a lot of people might get away with stuff for a long time and then bang, it all comes crashing down. This all depends on the amount of virtue and good or bad service they have come in with. Another analogy that I love, which will get people thinking, is the ancient masters for years say that the eyes are the window to the soul. Osho says that the eyes, we don't see with our eyes. We see through our eyes. The eyes are a mechanism for the spirit to see through in this reality. For example, there have been countless um, stories from people who have had death experiences and then come back. There's also people who... Um, intentionally practice astral projection, uh, had out of body experiences, whether they've been uh, intentional or accidental. Some people, I know friends who've had out of body experiences without uh, meaning it, and they've got to be frightened. What do they all say? It's all the same story. They say they are out of their body and they are looking down at their body and they're out of the reality. Therefore, they're not seeing with their eyes, okay? They are still seeing everything, even though they're looking down on their body. So, this, it's the spirit that's inside the body looking out. The ears are a mechanism for, to pick up sound waves and decode it for the spirit inside. When we look at uh, someone, I'm going to use my dog again because he's beautiful dog. My wife and me are always saying, Harley has beautiful eyes. Well, the truth is, Harley's just got two brown eyes. And if Harley was, sorry for using this uh, analogy again, but if Harley had transitioned, you would, his eyes would look different. What we see that we love when we look in Harley's eyes is Harley's soul. It's his gentle spirit. 
It's spirit looking back at us, okay? There's some people you can't look in their eyes. You might have a karmic history. Your two souls may have had a bad, negative, karmic past. There's some people when you look in their eyes, it's love at first sight. Your souls have had great lifetimes together. This is spirit seeing spirit. Master Shah says, the, everything has a soul. And the soul is the essence of that thing. The soul has its own likes, dislikes, uh, preferences, intelligence. It's a very important one. Master Shah says, if we, when we learn to tap into our soul's potential, we can basically, there's, there's a warehouse of information of things we've done. We may have been a writer. We may have been um, scientists, we may have been professors, we've, done, we've had so many lifetimes, and this is the soul having physical experiences. We can, Master Shah gives techniques how to tap into that, using soul communication, connect them back with our souls. It's very important. I recommend anyone watching this, take the time and go and see Master Shah or some of his representatives and, and Attend a soul communication workshop. Master Shah says the physical life is very limited, yet the soul life is eternal. So what's that telling us? That's telling us that the real world is the soul world. Many of us think that we are a body that has a soul. And it's actually the opposite. We are a spirit having a physical experience. And that's why life is short compared to the life of our soul. So this is another point why meditation is so important. Because when we meditate, what are we doing? We are spending time in heaven or in the soul world. Or when we chant a mantra, we, whatever we chant, whatever we invoke with soul power we are bridging that gap we are bringing heaven to us or we are going to heaven in fact it's both and the the reason for that is the longer we stay here without meditation in my personal opinion this is from experience if i go you know even a few days without meditating i'd find myself being very um reactive i react to things i get caught in the five senses and I, I really feel disconnected when i do daily meditation i stay grounded i stay calm and i see things differently because that's what we're doing we're basically spending time home and our real home which is in the soul world so meditation is so important don't take my word for it Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.